Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your cruise director Kristen and this is Dutch Square Mall in Columbia, South Carolina. We've got quite a bit of history here, so let's get right into it. The planning for Dutch Square Mall began in 1965 and was planned to be built on a 100-acre former cow pasture purchased from the local Kaufman family. The developer, Arlen Cotter, referred to the mall fondly as his third child, stating that the only thing about it is the gestation period took about five years from concept to grand opening. The original anchor lineup was Woolco, Woolworth's large format discount store chain, along with two traditional department stores, Taps and JB White. The first to open was JB White on February 26, 1970, preceding the mall by about six months. The store heavily marketed itself on futuristic shopping, featuring an on-trend for the 70s mod student department with stained wood beams and a footwear salon featuring what they called a Parisian Air. Dutch Square celebrated its grand opening on August 6, 1970. It was the largest mall in the Carolinas at the time and it remained the first enclosed mall in Columbia until 1977 when Columbia Place opened. And we may be talking more about that one in the near future, so subscribe if you want to see Columbia Place too. It was also home to the first Chick-fil-A location in South Carolina at a time where they were heavily targeting locations in the new, vibrant retail concept called The Mall. Dutch Square had a blockbuster first year, especially since this was the first of its kind in the region, and held a gala anniversary event featuring appearances by Miss South Carolina and the popular and disturbing children's television character H.R. Puff and Stuff. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. I'm pretty sure it's Gritty's grandpa. One really fascinating thing I found when I was researching this was J.B. White's Springfest sales event, which seemed to be focused on offering classes at the store on everything from stain removal to sewing classes to what to make in your new pressure cooker. I feel like this is something that's maybe due for a revival. I think somewhere like Macy's or Dillard's might sell even more Instant Pots or Ninja Gadgets if they showed people how easy they are to use, and that's definitely a selling point that online shopping can't offer you. In fact, one of the things that fascinates me about finding advertisements for old department stores is the wide menu of services they offered. Alterations, restaurants, classes, bridal fittings, fur storage, all of these various offerings meant that older anchor stores were enormous, sometimes reaching three or four stories. By the time the 90s rolled around and many of these services had been scaled back, stores condensed their merchandise onto fewer levels and often closed the upper floors that were no longer in use. By 1990, competition had come for Dutch Square, with Richland Mall enclosing and expanding in 1988 and Columbiana Center opening in 1990, which my hotel was across the street from when I was in town and it's only a few exits away. Dutch Square pulled out all the fanfare to drum up attention for their 20th anniversary, running a multi-page advertising special in Columbia's newspaper, The State. I love when I find those. They make my life so much easier, and it did not disappoint. In fact, most of the old photos from the beginning of this video came from that one set of articles. All that being said, Dutch Square had newer, fancier competition nipping at its heels. They unveiled a plan to try to lock down a Macy's location in 1993, but the deal fell through as the company was in the midst of a bankruptcy at the time and scaled down their expansion plans. To this day, Dutch Square only has three anchors, only one of which is partially occupied. The 90s had a lot of shakeups with the anchors here, especially as local chains with three or four locations began being purchased by bigger chains nationwide. Taps closed in 1995 to be demolished and replaced by a cinema that's still open but has changed hands a few times. J.B. White merged with Dillard's and most of their locations, including ones at malls I've covered, became Dillard's, but that isn't what happened here, possibly because they would have had another location fairly nearby at Columbiana Center, so their building was sold to Belk. The J.B. White at Richland, a mall I sorely regret missing out on, also became a Belk rather than Dillard's. And as a side note, if you would like a really comprehensive look at Richland, my friend and the guy I co-run our Discord server with, Sal, has a fantastic video on it and you should look it up.
Woolco closed down their operations at Dutch Square in 1983. A portion of their former space was converted to additional inline mall space, and the remainder was taken up by another local department store, Brendel's. After Brendel's closed, their former space became an office depot that didn't open into the mall, and the former mall space was once again converted back to a department store with the arrival of Burlington. And a very special thank you to DMOD's own research queen, Phoenix, who helped me piece together some of the anger history, and I couldn't have done it without her help. So thank you. By 2009, with Columbiana Center eating Dutch Square's lunch and the overall retail landscape beginning its long, slow slide into where we are now, Belk announced a grand reopening. Reading into this further, it was a clever bit of marketing spin because what they actually did was downsize their three-level store like we were talking about earlier, closing the majority of the uppermost floor save the beauty salon, and consolidating their merchandise onto the other two levels. Belk closed at Dutch Square on January 15th, 2015. At the time the closure was announced, the mall was 57% vacant, which, for better or worse, is about where it is today. The last big remodel here was in the early 2000s, and overall I think it still feels very 90s, which is not a complaint. Palm trees and tile are where I feel most at home. The mall is currently owned by a firm called Nassimi Realty, which, to the best I can tell, does not seem to specialize in enclosed malls, and the majority of their holdings are big box and strip centers. The retail lineup now seems to suggest they're working their relationships with stores that usually occupy the other sort of centers they own. Office Depot and Planet Fitness would be right at home in one of their open-air properties, and my opinion is that they're doing their best in a tough economic landscape. Most of the small inline tenants are consistent with what you'd see in a struggling mall with a lot of independently owned stores, which honestly I kind of like to see. I've said this before, that I think when a mall reaches this stage, it has a good chance of maintaining because people are often more motivated to support stores owned by their friends and neighbors. It will likely never reach the level it once was, but malls, like the neighborhoods they reside in, can evolve. I didn't really notice a lot of water spots on the ceilings, which is surprising for a mall the age of this one, and someone's obviously working hard to keep it clean. In 2018, the local government took an interest in turning portions of the mall into offices and using the parking lot as a sort of transportation hub. They were unable to reach a deal with the owners and turn their attention to other nearby properties. The owners are obviously not ready to give up yet, as long as the market doesn't give up on them, which remains to be seen. 
It's hard out here for a mall and the people who work and shop there. 